I will make this prediction. Joe Biden will not bring the country together. He will divide it further. He will create, through his policies, more division, more tribalism, more hatred, more angst. National unity requires what? What does it mean? What does it mean? National unity requires peaceful coexistence. National unity requires individuals to feel, to be free. Free of their neighbor's interference. Free from constant government control and government oppression. Free from the pressure group of the moment. I think we are continuing on a path that we started many decades ago. We are on a path of a democracy, not, not a constitutional republic anymore, but democracy, driven by pressure group upon pressure group upon pressure group, ripping the country to shreds. And the Democratic Party, which has embraced, at least its, its left wing has embraced, identity politics, and indeed, Biden is, is at least sanctioning the whole idea of identity politics. But a left wing that has embraced identity politics, tribalism, in other words, based on color of skin, tribalism, in other words, based on your ethnic origins, is not a political party that can bring people together, but can only divide, can only splinter, can only cause people to look warily and suspiciously, suspiciously about their neighbor. What is the neighbor after? Who is he supporting? Which group does he belong to? What ethnic group is he really a member of? Will I be sacrificed to him? Will he be sacrificed to me? Will we both be sacrificed to the neighbor across the street? Because the demands now for sacrifice all over the place. Sacrifice to industries, to the environment, certain supposed racial groups to other racial groups. The sacrifice of the wealthy and the successful for the sake of unity to those who are not as wealthy and not as successful. Sacrifice built on sacrifice, built on sacrifice. The sacrifice of the healthy to the sick, of those who have insurance to those who don't. The sacrifice of doctors and nurses. What the Trump, what the, whew, I'm going to have to get used to this. This is going to take me a while replacing Trump and Biden because, you know, it's, it's the, it's the, um, it's the derangement syndrome, it, you know, has to adjust. Um, the Biden administration is an administration of division. It's an administration of pressure groups. Now, it'll be less vulgar. It'll be less obnoxious. It'll be less uh, appeasing to certain groups, but it'll be appeasing to other groups. And we can already expect that it is going to cause division and strife and anger. And it's already causing that within the Democratic Party. I mean, this election has not been celebrated within the Democratic Party. There was a phone call that was, I, I guess, uh, uh, people were writing about this in the press, about a phone call that the Democratic caucus in the House had uh, you know, a few days ago after the election results came in. And the more moderates within the party were yelling and screaming that the reason they had lost members in the House and the reason that they did not gain the Senate is because of the far left. It's because of, I mean, they, they literally, they, they were saying, you know, it's because Medicare for all. As long as you advocate for Medicare for all, we will lose. As long as you advocate for, you know, uh, reparations, we will lose. But that's what they believe, so they can't help themselves. That's what the far left is. And, and they're not going anywhere. 
and they're going to have to be appeased to get the votes unless Biden can pull off some kind of miracle and truly govern from the center without the votes of people, of his party members on the far left. I mean, that would be quite, quite an achievement. But an achievement I don't think he is capable of, in spite of the fact that he comes from, you know, he's had decades in uh, the legislative branch, his best friends are Republican senators. Yeah, I think he will get stuff done with Republicans. But he will also work very hard not to alienate those on his left. And to the extent that he does that, he will not be able to do much. So no, America is not going to be healed by a Biden presidency. Unity will not come to us by a Biden presidency. Unity requires peace. Requires the ability to live your life based on your values, free a people's constant intervention in every aspect of your life, in every aspect of your business. It's too late for that. It is too late for that. We live now in a world of intervention. We live in a world of, in a mixed economy, in a world of pressure groups. Dismantling that, that is what it will take to dismantle the tribalism, to dismantle the, um, the tribalism and to dismantle the disunity, the hatred, the suspicion, the anger, the frustration that Americans feel today. And they do, and, and they're justified. I mean, the Trump voters, the Trump voters, the voters who voted for him in 2016 and the voters who voted for him in 2020, and many of the Biden voters who voted for him in 2020, who are frustrated, who are alienated, who, are, who feel like they've been left behind, who feel like they are not understood, who feel like they've done what they were supposed to do, they've worked hard in their life and they're not succeeding. They're right and just to feel frustrated. They're right and just to feel anger. They're right and just to feel unheard. And they're right and just, in a sense, not to know where to focus their anger on. Because they have been betrayed. The working class, the middle class, all of us have been betrayed. We've been betrayed by our intellectuals. We've been betrayed by those who would turn America into Europe. We've been betrayed by those who would take away our freedoms steadily, consistently, constantly. Take away those freedoms. And hand over power to this pressure group or that pressure group to run our lives. They've been betrayed by people who told them they, you know, that they could stagnate and everything would be okay. People who misrepresented the American system as guaranteeing jobs for life when it doesn't and it can't and it won't and it never will. And if it does, those jobs will be jobs that guarantee poverty for life. They've been betrayed by people who told them they don't have to compete. That their jobs are secure without competition because America is a great nation and their jobs will always be around. No. They've been betrayed by the people who told them they don't have to move. They don't have to go anywhere. That Uncle Sam will always take care of them. And indeed, that it's the job of the government to take care of them. That they have the right to stagnate. They have the right to be parasites. They have the right to live off of others. That they don't have to work, compete, adjust, learn new skills, constantly change and grow and better themselves. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman 
who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.